Hello, my dear viewers. This amazing story will be very instructive for you. It is very interesting and beautiful. I wish you enjoy watching it. It's only the beginning of 11 p.m. on the clock, and Tony is already dead drunk. The guy did not remember what he had been doing the last couple of hours. All events were tormented before my eyes, not wanting to add up to a clear picture. Loud music within the walls of the club, a motley smell of perfume set in sports and the dance of the visitors, did not contribute to sobriety. So keep for the last remnants of consciousness, he went outside to go home, despite Rich Dad, who was sure to get out of touch, and the keys to the car habitually found in the inside pocket of his jacket. Tony was in no hurry to get behind the wheel himself. His life was dear to him, and he knew perfectly well that this was a bad idea. It was decided to catch a private trader. Only now the wallet did not want to be in the multiple pockets of the jacket, the jeans of the jacket. Lost then, the guy decided, it doesn't matter. He will make it home anyway. The main thing is to get it, and there he will quickly get out of the taxi and hide behind the huge gates of the mansion. Tony isn't used to changing plans. Yes, and he had no arrogance. And he had no arrogance, and he was rarely ashamed of his impulsive actions. All the same, he grew up in great prosperity, in an enviable position. Therefore, the desire to take everything from life went with him through life, hand in hand. Only experienced drivers earn extra money in the evenings as a driver. Passengers like Tony could be smelled from a mile away by the obvious aroma of alcohol, wild eyes, and impudent smiles. They understood that they would not wait for payment from such a client, so they demanded in advance. Yes, I have everything. The guy was indignant, barely moving his tongue, looking at the man driving an inexpensive domestic car. I'll throw it on top of you if you get home faster. But this did not convince any of the three drivers who managed to stop. They all couldn't trust him. He twisted in the chassis, even near the road. He hugged himself with his arms, realizing that the night coolness was creeping under his clothes. And then he caught sight of a tramp of the underpass, begging for alms. Colin was sitting in an old hat and raincoat. He was about 45, but no one would have given less than 50 to look at. The hardships he lived through left a sure imprint on his face and health. Nearby stood a cane that led its owner. And to the left at the feet is the same homeless dog, sadly settled into the darkness with brown eye. At the sight of this couple, a brilliant idea came to the mind of a drunken Tony. He rubbed his hands contentedly, rejoicing at his cleverness. The tramp's box must have been a formidable sucker, no doubt about his own actions. Tony quickly approached Colin, grabbed the box, and wanted to rush to the leak. But the dog rose before his own, stunned by his master, and began to bark loudly. Shaggy was harmless. He wouldn't bite, only alarmed by the sudden intrusion. Well, give it back. Stop, stop, you say the thief, Colin yelled. She reached for her cane to get her money back. Catch up, try... Having fun, shouted Tony. This little adventure gave him an adrenaline rush. Why did it become fun? A lame leg did not allow Colin to quickly jump up and catch up with the thief. Calling for help is useless. Not a soul in the empty streets. And who would help someone like him? People shied away from him in broad daylight. Although the man never begged for money like a beggar clinging to clothes and hands. He gave people the right to decide for themselves whether they could donate some of their cash to him or not. This time, Tony was lucky. Another private trader showed up as soon as he ran up to the road and agreed to give him a lift, immediately accepting payment. Colin looked after him, angry at his impotence. Tears suddenly welled up in his eyes and he didn't hold them back, burying his face in his hands. Life has often been cruel to him, but this money is so important to him that he could not come to terms with their loss. Veronica wearily poured towards the exit of the shopping center building when she heard a shrill dog barking outside. She could clearly see what was happening behind the glass windows, and the way the stranger picked up the homeless man's box of money and the way he disappeared into the car. 
Everything happened too fast. The girl from shock rooted to the place and could not run out in time and rein in the scoundrel. She knew Colin. For some time, she worked in a mobile phone store just next to the transition, in which a man was invariably sitting. Uncle. Nika ran out into the street and sat down in front of the man. Who did you see this villain? No, he appeared suddenly. Wiping a tear, said Colin. I couldn't do anything. He thumped his thigh in anger and didn't even feel pain. Here's a goat, escaped from the girl. It's like you have to sink low to steal from a homeless person. Freeze him at night in the hope of getting an extra penny. Inside, everyone raged with indignation. She often helped Colin, but there was no time to talk. Veronica was sometimes late for work. Sometimes she was too tired after that to linger even more. She pulled a few bills out of her purse and kept the rest on her card. I know it's not enough, but it's still useful. Hold. Colin bowed, thanking the girl for her kindness. He didn't know what he had done to deserve her kindness. But he was glad that there was at least one person in the world who considered him an equal. That would be to get this villain and punish how to do it. Nika began to pace from side to side. Exactly. She clapped her hands, frightening, shuddering Shaggy. There are cameras everywhere. He definitely hit the lens of at least one of them. She turned around, pointing at the billing of her work. I can go up to the security guard right now and ask to see the tape and then glorify this jerk. As soon as I put all this on the internet, the whole country will know his shameful business tomorrow. It's useless. Don't waste your energy. Colin shook his head, not believing in miracles. It is unlikely that anyone will recognize him, and the police will definitely not work according to my soul. His words did not convince Veronica, and she decided to do her own thing. The girl nevertheless returned to the mall, and having told the story about the robbery, obtained a record. Arriving home, Nika mercilessly put the video with the scoundrel to the general court not allowing him to escape from justice. After drinking the day before, the alcoholic Tony slept soundly and sweetly, unaware of the chaos that had begun in the world while he was in the dark, in a drunken spree. Video. Netizens quickly figured out the heir to the furniture empire, Mr. Jeffrey Tomati, a businessman known throughout the region. The views were in the tens of one thousand. The commentators were actively expressing indignation, forcing Tony's father to cling to his head in a frenzy. He would not have noticed this himself if the secretary had not called the man early in the morning. Where is that bastard? Mr. Tomati barked. I don't know if my son spent the night at home at all. Tony usually didn't let his parents know about his whereabouts. Disappears now with friends, then outside the city. In God, Forgotten places where he was brought on a drunken head. He was spoiled and massive freemen often got into trouble because of the feeling of invulnerability. But to seriously frame the family. Jeffrey Tanmati didn't believe he was seeing it in his blood. His only heir and beloved son grew up so useless and disorderly that the man became ashamed of himself and at the same time sorry. Was he really going to one day have to turn the case over to this blockhead who couldn't even tell the good from the blatantly unacceptable? 47-year-old Mr. Tomati often heard in his address that he looks good, that he knows a special recipe for youth, but only modestly kept silent. Thanks to his genes, he himself was surprised how he manages to do it. In the presence of a son, more and more new problems are thrown at him. He already has enough problems in business. So also, Tony throws out, the man grew up in a time of equality and did not think that life would turn out in this way, giving him the opportunity to develop his own business. Only the wealth didn't magically float to Mr. Tomachi. He worked for a long time on what he eventually had. Then many were unlucky. Everyone tried to grab their piece of luck. Many of the comrades with whom the man started his business were the same honest, hard workers, but they did not manage to unwind like that. Sometimes he thought that, in spite of everything, efforts were made, time and material investments could burn out. 
That's why Jeffrey couldn't forgive Tony for being careless. Streams always shook over him, did not offend, raised him in respect, and expected the same. Only the guy has long ceased to take the threats of his parents seriously. He wasn't even afraid of his father anymore. Gladys became Tony's stepmother when Tony was barely 13, a dangerous age for experiencing a parent's divorce. But to Jeffrey's relief, the boy dealt with the shock quite simply. He saw his mother to this day, but he was able to accept Gladys. At first, Tony was wary of the new mistress of the house, but the kindness and affection of the woman made him feel her sincere attitude. My God, Tony, what have you done again? Gladys read, once again trying to push the sleeping stepson. Your father is evil as hell, and you don't know anything. Mom, why are you bothering? The guy answered deftly. They pulled a blanket over his head. It's too early. A few minutes later, Jeffrey could not stand it and himself appeared in Tony's bedroom to pull him out of bed himself and demand answers. He no longer had the patience. Therefore, the guy jumped on the spot, getting in the face with a jet of ice water. Gladys, dear. Jeffrey turned to his wife. Wait for us in another room. The woman looked at the topic with apprehension, but left. Hey, father, what is it? The guy muttered displeasedly, turning to his father. And I'll show you now. Whispers in anger, the man put the laptop on the nightstand, bed, and played a video of his son's crime yesterday. What kind of frills is this? Completely crazy with his kicks. What do you want me to do now? Give you under arrest. On emotions, Jeffrey Tomati sat up and hit the cabinet door. Tony winced in fear. My father was rarely angry, but he remembered all these times for the rest of his life. Right now, his sleepy brain was refusing to process what was happening. The guy was more surprised at the presence of the video than his act. It could cost me my career. How can you not understand? A lot of people have watched the video. What are the comments? Yes. I'm ready to fall through the ground from shame. This is unthinkable. How could I raise such an idiot? Let's see how you pay when everything collapses. There will be no money, no girls, no dinners from restaurants with delivery, and no new car. We will ride the subway, shop in the market, recalculate utility bills, and move to some shabby area. Eh? That's enough, Timur said, realizing that Stefan's cries do not carry real threats. Nobody was going to punish him and limit him in money, which means there was nothing to worry about. Who gets upset because of such nonsense? Well, I'm wrong, so what? I didn't hijack the plane. Children of politicians also get into scandals. But they still sit in their places. Talk to me, that man waved at me. And Tony reflexively ducked to avoid getting hit in the neck. His father never beat him, but you never know. The guy kept waiting for Jeffrey to let off steam and breathe a sigh of relief. To go to bed and sleep. The room before my eyes was still floating and the noise only interfered. I'll find a way to get you in line. So no. With these words, Jeffrey Tomati finally left Tony alone. Everyone disappeared because of what happened. His son's reaction did not satisfy him. He seethed with rage and a desire to somehow change the situation. He has important negotiations on his nose, on which the further development of his company depended. Jeffrey has suffered some losses lately. He was no longer the only one, but became one of them. People have a choice. Needs have changed, and it's hard to keep up with all the changes. A lucrative contract was necessary for a man to once again stand firmly on his feet in the field of trade. He couldn't let Tony derail his hard work, first thing. To remedy the situation, it was necessary to remove the video from access in order to stop the growth in the number of views. Jeffrey was sure that this unpleasant record would still make itself felt. Some of his native people will be found by downloading it from the internet to your computer. With the help of the skills of reliable people, the man found out who exactly posted the video and postponing all the cases for later personally went to meet with Veronica. He usually didn't handle cases like this on his own, but that was too delicate. Soon, 
A smiling saleswoman in a purple cell phone uniform stood in front of Jeffrey Tomati and greeted him, hearing on what occasion a respectable man in expensive clothes came to her. Nick immediately swallowed the unpleasant lump in his throat. Yesterday, uploaded a video of Tony's antics. She didn't think about the consequences. I could not predict that serious people could stand behind the street thief. And got scared. She guessed the position of Jeffrey Tomati without mistake. After all, the work obliged her to immediately determine the financial capabilities of buyers in order to help them with the choice. Veronica didn't know what to expect from the voice stranger. But the man chose the right tactic. He asked his colleagues to give the girl a short break and took her to a cafe on the ground floor. Understand, Veronica, I did not come to frighten you and not to justify my son. This situation has thrown me off track. Tony set me up like that. I'll punish him myself, you can be sure. But this video needs to be removed. He brings shame to my family, hurts my business. I cannot be responsible for the actions of an adult child for the rest of my life. I can't hold him by the hand, Nika thought. Mr. Tomati seemed to her decent and absolutely simple, despite his impressive condition. He did not try to bribe her, intimidate her, or influence her in any other way. Colin. That homeless man was humiliated. He cried when he was robbed. Maybe for your son, this is a trifle, a penny, a trifle, but for someone it is a vital necessity. The girl did not give up, and the man nodded in understanding. Promise that you will reimburse him for everything and help if you can. No one knew. And what specifically to ask from a person who is clearly capable of much? She was afraid that her statements would be taken for arrogance and move on to rudeness. But that did not happen. Necessarily. That's what I planned. I am a man of my word. You can record it on a tape recorder. And if Colin remains dissatisfied with my help, you can post a video with me already on the network. Veronica felt better at Jeffrey's awkward joke. She smiled and deleted the video via her phone at the same moment. She may have risked agreeing so quickly, but so far she didn't regret trusting him. Over the years she lived in the city, Nika learned to read people better. And when she first found herself among the noisy streets, she was more like a lost puppy. The girl was proud of the changes that had happened to her, no matter how hard she got it. Nick grew up in a village in a family of ordinary hard workers. Father and mother worked on a local farm, worked hard for wear and tear. We didn't expect much from life. The wife's daughter was brought up. They also took care that it was modest. There was no bath. And the father even at one time insisted that the girl stay with them after school. She has nothing to do in the city. The man pounded on the table with his fist. Why was his wife shuddering? Why was it bad here? Next to mom and dad. Are we taking good care of her? What does she lack? That's what you came up with, Will. Nika is a child of another time. She has her own plans and interests. Besides, you need to get an education. What will she learn here? Twisting cow's tails. Audrey chuckled, but Will didn't let up. We need this education. We have with you, and what? We did not become professors and diplomats, and she does not shine. Well, why did you break up ahead of time? She doesn't know life at all. If she stays with us only to the detriment next to her parents. No independence. She doesn't know how to talk to strangers. Just shy. You never know how life will turn out. You will have to earn your own bread. And she's not used to it. Husband will take care of her. Graduate from his school right away or give a good boy. And they will live. Oh, how simple everything is with you. She threw up her hands. Wives and husbands, you know. Are also not eternal. You can also press. Through the efforts of Veronica's mother, she was allowed to enter the city university. She prepared seriously for the exams and entered only the paid department. Parents immediately said that they would not pull such an amount, but the girl refused to return home. Since it's out, try to stay here. 
Will was initially indignant, wanted to take his daughter's things, her own back to the village. But Nika showed firmness and assured her relatives that she would take care of herself. It turned out to be not so easy. At first, the girl did not stay at any place of work longer than for the internship period. The authorities were unhappy with her, and she herself often returned to a rented apartment, all exhausted and crying. Communication with people greatly exhausts her, and even her colleagues did not miss the opportunity to make fun of the village wiretap, found fault with every little thing. Nika hardly accepted that each organization had its own policy, which had to be strictly adhered to, and corrected its habits, it took a long time. Therefore, Veronica often wanted to quit everything and return home. After all, it is calm, safe, and familiar there. But at some point she stopped feeling sorry for herself and accepted the circumstances. Nika worked in the mobile phone shop for the third year. Here she liked the conditions, liked the team, and the attitude of the authorities. The girl was respected and considered the best worker, who always helped newcomers get comfortable without intimidation. After four years of wandering from one store to another, Nika realized that she had matured and her thinking was different from the thinking of an 18-year-old schoolgirl who decided to get rid of her father's guardianship. I think it's time for us to meet Colin. I didn't see him when I entered. Mr. Tomati's voice pulled Veronica out of her memories of the past. Do you know where he usually lives? Nika nodded quickly finishing her coffee because she would no longer be able to break for lunch, and stood up from the table. It didn't take long to find Colin. The one just warps a walk between the mall building and the fast food cafe. The girl cautiously looked at her wristwatch, worried that her colleagues would not be happy with her prolonged absence. Therefore, she hastily introduced the men to each other and ran back to work. I hope you will find a common language and come to an agreement, Nika said, finally with a smile. Colin was confused by the unexpected meeting with Tony's father, but the man showed up not to hurt his other leg and demands to keep his mouth shut. As an influential position, Jeffrey was very surprised to see in front of him, not just a tramp, but his own age. Since his own age had crossed the 40-year mark, he no longer considered such people old. For him, 50 years have become the middle of life as a second youth. Therefore, parallels were involuntarily drawn in my head. Jeffrey did everything he could in his years not to meet the 50th anniversary in poverty and loneliness. But Colin led such a sad and hopeless life that the sight of the tramp made him feel even worse, and the degree of guilt increased. I came to ask you for forgiveness on behalf of my son. Jeffrey even bowed a little in front of the man, leaning against the cold wall. His act is unforgivable, and I'm giving you everything he stole and more. How did you get to this? Man sighed, not knowing how to continue. His curiosity could hurt the interlocutor. After all, people are not used to pouring out their souls in front of strangers. However, Colin was not embarrassed. I understand. It's none of my business. But I need to know all the circumstances. It is likely that I can do something else for you than just pay off with money. They don't offend me. Your questions, Colin answered simply, shrugging his shoulders. I visited different things. I'm not used to. I would never have thought that I would be in this position. There is just no choice. I am no longer fit for any job. Look at me. Nobody needs this. Yes, in age two. Even if he could be hired as a loader somewhere or in another place where force is used, it just doesn't make much sense to me. Young strong ones have already worked out everything, but I am not good enough for them with my leg. This is where I get good people. Sometimes my sick daughter shares. Recently got married. I dreamed of a wedding, kids, and then the doctors discovered cancer. They said it was dangerous to run. We need to act immediately. My wife's salary is small. All funds for medicines go away. The groom left my daughter as he found out. Nikolai's face twisted contemptuously at the mention of the failed son. In law, a cowardly scoundrel. An operation is required, but we cannot raise such an amount. My wife thinks I'm useless. Just get angry. We generally have a rather complicated relationship. 
She won't let me go home after everything. When I was young, I worked on a shift, lost health. So now I can't wake up. Away from the family, all sorts of other women had adventures. A fool, I was neglected with my wife. So she didn't forgive me. And now it's not about romance. Colin paused for a moment, catching his breath. He got a little carried away with the details, but the words came out on their own. After all, for a very long time, no one was interested in his affairs and allowed him to speak out. Jeffrey was not depressed by the fact that he had to listen to the personal problems of an outsider. On the contrary, he seemed attentive and focused, not deeming Colin stupid or unworthy of sympathy. I understand that I am not the best husband and father. Before, I didn't think about my family. It came later when all the sores got out. I wanted to take care. I wanted to take care. I wanted to live comfortably in a family. It was only too late that I came to my senses. Margaret, my wife, cut me out of life a long time ago, relying only on herself to run the household and take care of Julia. She no longer believed that I was, but I found them about seven months ago. My wife didn't even want to let me in, but my daughter insisted all her life. She dreamed of being with me, and I saw her only a few times and sometimes sent cards for her birthday. I experienced this for the first time. You know, a great feeling of love for your child when I was younger. Even when Julia was born, he was not so elated. Apparently, this is the age. Mr. Tomati said, shaking his head. I also began to notice some sentimentality behind me. I began to be touched by things to which I had previously been indifferent. There is no longer that cruelty in me and with me as well. And now I'm broken that my girl is in mortal danger. Every day my heart hurts for her. I ask God, why didn't he send this infection to me? I can say I deserve it for all my tricks. After all, Julia has not yet lived properly. Still no use for me. I don't contribute anything to society. I'm just sitting here with outstretched hands. She may become a mother in the future. Give the world a new life. As if speaking to himself, Colin said quietly, she is definitely more useful. Jeffrey didn't interrupt anymore. He was immersed in history. The men were even a little scared when they learned about the terrible diagnosis of his daughter. I can imagine how I would feel if such a misfortune happened to his son. It was scary even to think about it, and he drove away obsessive thoughts from himself. Jeffrey, too, was something to regret, and there was no one to share it with. Only he could decide a lot thanks to his condition. And the poor, tormented man is not in front of him. He came to the meeting with the intention of helping and did not refuse it. But now he wanted more. He handed Colin a decent amount of money. He was frightened at first, putting his hands forward, refusing. But Jeffrey insisted, Colin, I will not make empty promises and give you hope by saying that I will pay for your daughter's operation. Let's start small. I'll arrange for a re-examination of Julia. The best doctors have all the tests and procedures again. I understand that she is already tired of going through all this, but it is necessary. Would this help? God, thank you very much. Colin was ready to kneel if his left leg could bend. Thank you very much. I am indebted to you. You are just an incredible person. Tears poured from the man's eyes absolutely shamelessly. He clung to Jeffrey's hand, shaking his thanks tightly, and could even kiss him. But something stopped him. Don't, Colin. Your Julie deserved it. You don't owe me anything. This is what I owe you. I couldn't raise my son to be a worthy person. So let your daughter live and make this world a little better with her existence. Jeffrey was embarrassed. He did not like it when they fawned over him or humiliated her. He did not consider himself superior or better than others and did not welcome such an attitude. The man's eyes also lit up at the sight of such an agitated vagabond. The men parted ways after exchanging phone numbers. Jeffrey promised to let me know about the date of the examination. The call came three days later. An expensive car drove up to Margaret and Julia's house. 
in which Mr. Tomati and Colin were already sitting. The woman did not believe her husband, but his mysterious acquaintance, the rich man, really organized all the medical procedures in the best clinics in the city and was also going to pay for them. The atmosphere in the salon was tense. Margaret did not look at her husband holding Julia's hand to calm her trembling. The girl also did not particularly hope for a miracle, but my heart was still pounding. Colin gave his ladies short, guilty glances from time to time, knowing that it is unbearable for his wife to be with him in a closed space for a long time. I was wrong not to believe you, Margaret said in the silence of the salons. You didn't deceive us at least once. You couldn't hold back a bitter smile. I hope this trip will not be useless and confusion in our hearts in vain. We are so tired of living in hope. And thank you, Mr. Telmati, for coming in my husband's way. We cannot afford the services of such a clinic. Everything is better there, and there is a chance to get a more qualified recommendation for our case. You have a very stubborn husband, without a smile, but kindly, said Geoffrey. He remembered that the man stood for an extra penny for the treatment of his daughter on the street. In any weather, not sparing himself. Didn't that prove his unconditional love for his child? Dad, everything will be fine. Julia moved closer to Colin, wanting to reassure him. She was not ashamed of her father as he feared, accepted him the way he was. With his past mistakes, remorse, and a desire to make things right, Margaret spoke her own resentment but she did not put pressure on her daughter in order to distort the girl's impression of him. Julia was an adult and could independently make such decisions, despite the quarrels of her relatives. Julia completed the necessary procedures in just a couple of days. She was looking forward to the results of the tests and the verdict of the doctors. That day, in the corridor of the clinic, the same company supported her, hardly hiding their tension. When the doctor invited the patient and parents to enter the office, his face was impenetrable. Having looked at our pictures and those that you brought with you, I can assure you that you do not have oncology. Julia and Margaret hooted. Colin shuddered and the girl continued to sit straight with glassy eyes, waiting for an explanation. How can this be? We've been treated. Where? cried Margaret, who no longer had the strength to worry. She held on too long and was strong for her daughter so that she would not be afraid of anything. But now emotions have spilled out, make soft sobs howl under the reassuring gaze of the doctor. There are clearly no neoplasms in the old pictures. It looks like a technical failure, apparently inexpensive. It happens. Unfortunately, I cannot explain what else your previous doctors were guided by. But you don't even have cancer. However, due to the strong drugs that you have been taking for a long time, the condition of some organs has worsened. How scary is this? Julia asked with restraint. I don't have time to understand whether she should be happy or preparing for the worst. It's fixable. Several sessions of a dropper and other drugs that he prescribes will correct the situation. When you drink the entire course, return to the examination. I think there will be no problems. The situation, of course, is out of the ordinary, but there is no more threat to life. God. Margaret clung to her daughter, wanting to share this joyful moment with her. But the girl still did not believe that everything was resolved. All the suffering that she endured over the long months, all these nerves of parting with her fiancé, did she endure it in vain because of someone else's mistake? endlessly open to the doctor in gratitude. Margaret did not notice how her husband had been holding her hand for several minutes. For a couple of days spent together, Geoffrey witnessed the complexity of the spouses, but it seemed to him that everything was not hopeless. Maybe someday Margaret will find the strength to forgive him for the long years of absence. Let him not accept otherwise. As soon as the office door opened, Mr. Tomati saw an excited family with red eyes from tears and strange smiles. She is healthy, Colin rushed to him, grabbing his hand again. It's all thanks to you, Mr. Tomati. You allowed us to undergo an examination. So they would have ruined our girl if not for the new pictures. These Herods got it all mixed up. There is no cancer. 
We are indebted to you. What would we do without you? Jeffrey Margaret hugged and later you Julia joined, noting in shock. The man was glad that the girl was healthy, but he tried to free himself from the tenacious embrace of the family as soon as possible, which almost elevated him to the rank of God. Colin was already standing at a distance and nodded to Jeffrey. He was proud. I've been in trouble all my life, and how he dealt with them. But now he could not help but feel gratitude towards the wealthy and powerful businessman. We are waiting for you to visit at any time, Julia said as she said goodbye and hugged Jeffrey again. Exactly, said Margaret. Come to us for dinner sometime with your family. At least he thanked me in person. Weeks passed. Julia, who underwent treatment, was pleased with the result, not finding any extra infection in the body. She began to look healthier. The mood has always been high. Life got better. She no longer had to be afraid that she had never tried anything. After all, there was still plenty of opportunity ahead. By that time, the hype around the video had subsided. It was no longer on Veronica's flash drive, nor in the archives of the mall security. Jeffrey was glad that he had fixed the problem. And Tony seemed to have quieted down and no longer threw out any unexpected screws, trying to be less visible to my father. The man insisted that Tony personally meet with Colin and Veronica and apologize to them. After all, only these people became witnesses of his shame. The guy was not particularly happy about the prospect of making excuses to those who were absolutely not interesting to him, and also listening to their opinion about himself in response. But Tony had no choice. Jeffrey Tomati decided to take his behavior seriously, so he cut pocket money, took a job in his company, and promised to completely leave his son without a livelihood if he did not stop bringing problems. He found Colin near the entrance when he went to the store. Since Julia recovered, his life has changed dramatically. Yes, and Margaret significantly picked up on him. She allowed her husband to live with them. But there was no talk of returning their love. Daughter taught Colin how to use a computer and even helped to find a job through the Internet. Therefore, now he could work without leaving home and no longer worry that he would not be suitable as an employer because of his illness. And Colin accepted Tony's apology immediately, without much lamentation. The guy was delighted that he did not have to wallow at the feet in front of some five-minute tramp. Let him have his reasons. Now he should have met with Veronica, who brewed all this mess to complicate life in the subject. Veronica was again caught at the workplace. She politely said goodbye to another customer who left the salon with a smile. She turned to Tony, but after recognizing the smile from her face, instantly slipped. This girl is dangerous. It's good that he's not one of my exes, the guy chuckled. It is important to cross your arms over your chest. If you have something to say, wait until the end of the shift. Nick cut off. I do not share the cheerful mood. Guy, it was not enough to get a reprimand for you. Not very well brought up for benevolence. Tony clicked his tongue, attracting the attention of colleagues to the girl, to their conversation. But I don't sit on my parents' neck. Veronica hardly restrained herself so as not to show her tongue to the nasty guy. She didn't know why he showed up. But in a couple of minutes of his presence, she already managed to get bored. Tony did not go anywhere to walk around the trading floor and an eyesore. When the flow of visitors poured in, the guy again approached Nikki. I decide to buy something. Let's advise me. Veronica did not immediately realize that he was serious. It took half an hour to tell him about the advantages of different models of phones, one of which Tony still bought, despite the fact that he had his own, much tougher. Nick was glad that Tony's face was finally gone. She wanted to get home as soon as possible, take a shower and go to bed with the thought that tomorrow was not her shift. But as soon as she went outside, the guy appeared in front of her again. I actually came on business, he began uncertainly, tired in anticipation. Father said I must apologize. I already spoke to Colin. Now I'm ashamed. I don't always act like an idiot. It was just that he was drunk. Agree. I deserve severe punishment. 
My father is too soft. I expected the worst. I am sorry you had to see me like this. Nika was silent for a moment, considering what she had heard. She believed Tony's apology was sincere, no matter how moronic he seemed at first glance. What was in it anyway, referring to the late hour? The guy got involved with Nika, wanting to see her off. At first, they didn't have much to say. Different childhood social status, interests, leisure. But then someone said the name of a favorite band that young people were equally crazy about. Do you know if they have concerts in our city next month? Tony asked with a cheerful look in his eyes. Wow, I would go. Only the girls did not want to admit that they would hardly spend several hundred dollars for a couple of hours of live music. I have a difficult schedule. I'm afraid I won't be back. Come on, I invite. And I take care of all the expenses. It's not difficult for me. Talk to colleagues. You have a whole month ahead of you to fix this. Despite doubts, Veronica nevertheless agreed to the guy's proposal. She was sure that during this month he would forget that he had invited her and, in principle, would forget about her. Nika hoped in vain for Tony's bad memory, because when he got her phone number, he had not stopped describing, sending stupid jokes. The girl herself did not notice how she began to giggle at everything that this guy did, and I was also waiting for his message when he did not appear for a long time. It was so great. I'm just delighted. Veronica laughed. As soon as they left the concert, she was overwhelmed with emotions. She started talking with absolutely not noticing how easy it is for Tony next to her and how he looks at her. So miscommunication was not in vain. Young people became noticeably closer and did not feel embarrassed at the meeting. Glad you liked it. Finally, you relaxed, then also serious at your work. Teased all the guys. But Nick wasn't angry. Since then, Tony often called her for a walk, and she did not refuse. Usually the girl plunged headlong into work and was busy only paying bills, cleaning the apartment, having no interests. And I almost do not entertain the appearance of topics in her life. Made me shake a little to unwind. It was always fun and parody with him. It seemed that the guy was even cute. It turned out that he had been carrying feelings for Veronica for some time, but admitted this later. Fortunately for him, the girl reciprocated. The relationship between Veronica and Tony developed naturally and slowly. Young people spent every free minute together, and the guy never ceased to amaze his beloved with broad gestures. She refused to have Tony spend money on her, but allowed herself to be treated. With each new meeting, he seemed to her a different new one, not as irresponsible and cordial as she imagined him at the beginning. Veronica became a frequent visitor to the Tomati family's home, and he wondered how his son, the fool, had managed to get such a sweet girl. Are you a good influence on him? Jeffrey said. Somehow he was embarrassed when she tried to figure out a slight bias towards T. Thank you for that. I honestly didn't think he would ever settle down and stop causing problems. I hope it will be so, Nika agreed with him, inviting the man to have a bite to eat with the couple. Jeffrey was glad to spend time in a pleasant company, guests, among whom was Julia, who considered him almost a godfather after what he had done. She easily charmed Gladys and Veronica. Girls sometimes met on their own initiative, believing that they could well become friends. His son's trick with Colin's money nevertheless brought Jeffrey Tomati fame, which he did not need at all. Many of his partners have left his firm to no longer have anything to do with him. Afraid that crazy Tony would soon do something similar again, if not worse. The man was haunted by denials of interrupted supplies. Even many of the comrades with whom Jeffrey had worked for many years began to avoid him and no longer invited him to dinner, as in the old days. My dear, you have no face. The enemy is nearby. Gladys, meeting her husband from work. The man had hardly smiled for several months. I slept little, badly all the time poking at the laptop, trying to solve some urgent problems. He was on the phone, trying to persuade new partners to make a deal. It just fell apart from time to time. 
and the hope in the eyes of Geoffrey Tomati faded away. Sit down, hurry up. I will feed you now, and you will tell me everything. The woman affectionately stroked his head, leaving kisses on his cheek and began to set the table, placing a glass next to him. She saw her husband suffer, only he was not used to complaining and shifting his problems to strangers. Geoffrey tried to maintain his authority in the family, protect his relatives from the possible consequences of rumors, and shake his own business. There was no time to feel sorry for myself, but Gladys understood everything without words, providing support as best she can only a loving wife. Suffering huge losses, Geoffrey already despaired of finding a partner who would support him and allow him to make a new start in the market. Soon, however, luck smiled at him. But the joy did not last long. These people were not just business people. Their manners, tactics, and methods confused the man, making him regret his choice. But the papers have already been signed. Geoffrey Tomati found a new companion who, as it seemed to him, did not hesitate to go into crime. He hoped that their cooperation would not last long. Geoffrey received a hard blow to his reputation. Wow, as his own son framed. But with partners, he still found hope to rectify the situation. On that day, Galidis was tormented by a terrible, unnerving anxiety that had settled somewhere in her chest and was not going to calm down. Colin and Margaret have invited the family to celebrate Julia's birthday tonight. The holiday promised to be modest, but the couple could not help but invite dear guests when he is free. After all, people are waiting for us. I understand everything, but I cannot calm down. It's kind of a bad feeling. Tony and Gladys were halfway to Julia. When the traffic police officer called the woman, the guy immediately realized that something was wrong and stopped on the side of the road. Anxiously looking at the mother who, after talking on the phone, fell into hysterics. My father had an accident. He's being taken to the hospital. It is not known what happened to him, but the car is soft, boiled. My God, Gladys was angry with tears. Why do we need this punishment? The family did not attend the name day that evening. Having learned about the terrible incident, Veronica rushed to support her beloved. He and his stepmother were sitting in the corridor of the hospital. The doctors couldn't say for sure. Jeffrey Tomati was badly injured. He was immediately taken to an emergency operation without wasting any time. I have to find out what happened. I'll kill the one who is behind this. Tony walked along the corridor from side to side. No one has ever seen him so angry. She wanted to somehow console the guy, but there were no right words. Yes, and all of them are useless without the verdict of a doctor who has been standing over the operating table for several hours. Tony kept calling someone. Get to know the details of the accident. Everything was told to him, but nothing could console him. Jeffrey Tomati's car was rammed at an intersection and pushed into a ditch. Traffic police inspector shared his hunches that this could be an attempt. Tony was pretty sure it was the work of his father's new companion. He didn't like the man right away. Too arrogant, self-confident, and look unkind. Strange that Dad contacted him at all. Here, drink. Veronica handed the guy a cup of coffee. You should eat. I know you don't want to, but you need strength. Nobody knows what will happen next. Gotta hold on. Tony pulled her into a tight hug, pulling her close to him. She realized that he was crying. She didn't say anything, just slowly stroked his back. The appearance of the operating sister alarmed everyone present. Your husband needs a blood transfusion, she told Gladys without preamble. Please donate blood right now. Which one of you matches it? A new problem took everyone by surprise. Tony, as the only blood relative, rushed to the blood collection point. But soon another nurse returned to them. What happened? Gladys jumped up, waiting for fresh news about her husband's condition, hoping that very soon they would be announced that everything was over, that Geoffrey was already resting, and nothing threatened his health anymore. The fact is that you are not a blood child of your father. The news shocked the scientist Tony so much that he almost broke into a scream. Only Nicky's hand on his shoulder kept him from a huge scandal. What are you carrying? I am his only son. There are no other relatives here. 
What else can be done? Are you sure? How is that even possible? Gladys asked cautiously. She knew little about her husband's ex-wife. But Tony was definitely born in marriage and was not a stranger. In this state, the woman's brain generally refused to perceive anything and be active. Later, you can order a DNA test, the nurse, accustomed to emotional reactions from patients' relatives, replied with restraint. So she did not react in any way. Now, Mr. Tormati urgently needs blood. If you find one, send it to us right away. Taking advantage of his father's connections, Tony began calling all his acquaintances and Veronica her own. The guy hoped that his father's friends from the elite clinic would respond. But there he was told that they did not have suitable blood. Tony Nika cried out happily, Julia is already on her way here. She said you had a match with your father. Don't worry, she's on her way. She's on her way, she'll be here soon and it'll all be over. Tony rushed to the girl as soon as she appeared in the corridor of the hospital. What a nightmare. I can't believe this is happening, said Julia, wild-eyed as she threw off her coat. I'll take you. The guy escorted her to the right office and sat down in front of the door, impatiently stamping his foot. Tony had never prayed before. As a child, they tried to attract him to the faith. They baptized him, but he believed that this feeling should be born. Believe sincerely, but it was not in him. And that evening, in the hospital, for the first time, he began to whisper words, prayers in his palms, hoping that this would help his father get out. These were not memorized words, but those that came from the very heart of a frightened son. Tony could not even think that on that night, Dad might not be, that a person lived and then could easily leave this world. He wasn't ready for this, couldn't accept the idea that the world would exist after Jeffrey's death. Julia appeared in front of him, unexpectedly managing to frighten him. Hold on. The girl patted him on the shoulders. We have done everything in our power. We are sure that the doctors are doing their best without losing hope. It's a good hospital. Thank you. I'm sorry, Tony answered, not noticing. Tears welled up. Let's go back to Mom. I don't want to leave her like this. I pray all evening, and she sits there alone and worries wildly. Still around two, zero. Gladys, Tony, Nika, and Julia are held in the hospital's hospital corridor and have their worst fears. When the surgeon came out to them and smiled tiredly, Tony had to pick up her stepmother because she fainted. Gladys was quickly brought back to consciousness and told about the good things. Operation was successfully completed. You no longer need to fear for Mr. Tonmati's life. He has broken collarbone and right leg and multiple internal tears. But we patch it up. I understand that he is brisk with you, but you will have to be firm and make sure that he does not put much stress on himself until he is fully restored. We will talk about further treatment later, when everything starts to stay. Mr. Tomati has now been transferred to the intensive care unit. I can't let you in on him, not even for a second. Visits are prohibited. Try to visit him tomorrow, but not for long. And now you should go home and get a good sleep, like me. The man laughed, and he was supported by the relieved smiles of the visitors. Thank you, doctor. Thank you so much. Tony shook his hand. Veronica had to take the day off to stay overnight at Tony's house and spend the next day with him, no matter how hard he tried to be stoic around Gladys. He himself needed to show weakness, fell out and speak out. Otherwise, these emotions will not give him life later, gave Gladys tea and put her to bed. The guy returned to Nikki, who was sitting in the dining room. Incredible day, he said, sinking into a nearby chair. In the morning, we talked about the birthday and looking forward to the fun. Then this terrible news, and now we smile again and hope for the best. Veronica did not ask about what she heard from the nurse, who said that Tony was not a blood relative of Jeffrey. The topic was too delicate, and she understood that now, when the problem of life and health, men are no longer so acute, all the thoughts of her young man are occupied with just this. On the evening of the next day, 
the faithful four dared to visit Geoffrey, who had come to his senses after dinner. How glad I am that I haven't gone to heaven yet, said Nan, seeing the excited faces of those gathered. My dear. Guldis uncertainly approached the bed, takes her husband by the hand. I'm even scared to touch you. You are covered in plaster. These tubes are everywhere. The doctors say there's nothing to worry about, Jeffrey said slowly. Words were still hard for him, so he just looked at those who came to visit him and just hug him. And in the matter of kinship, Tony decided not to stutter yet, giving his father time to get stronger. But a week later, when his condition improved significantly, Jeffrey himself became interested in this. I've already talked to one private detective. He knows his business. Let them run these DNA tests of their own, and at the same time compare my blood with Julia's. Find out what's special about her. Once she came, soon the test results shocked Jeffrey, Tony, and Gladys. Julia was a blood relative of the man. This is how to understand, Gladys was perplexed. All that the whole story looks like a hoax, but the facts collected by a private detective help put everything in its place. A short investigation by a professional clarified the situation. Since Julia was also involved in the case, she and her parents were invited to visit Jeffrey Tomati in the hospital. He was lying in a spacious room, reminiscent of a hotel room, so there was enough space for everyone. His own comfort was important to him, because with his injuries, he would not be allowed to leave soon. When everyone gathered, the man laid out the documents in front of him, deciding to bring up to date, first of all, Colin and Margaret, who did not yet know about the DNA test. So you and I brought up each other's children, Margaret said, looking around at those around her. She thought it sounded very strange, but the others remained serious. Not even thinking to joke, Geoffrey. Are you saying that Julia is not our own, but Tony, our son? That's right, Geoffrey sighed already getting used to the idea. He didn't have a choice. He was obliged to tell people about what had been done to their family many years ago. After all, they deserved, however, much more comical. It seemed to him the way fate had brought them together for the first time. It turns out that you are my blood father. And who is mom? Julia looked very balanced, as always. Only her eyes betrayed concern. Now, Geoffrey had no control over how he tried to find various similarities between himself and his daughter. Let external. Let it be habits and character traits. But he began to notice them. The girl was as cold-blooded and hardy, and Tony was more impulsive and emotional, like Margaret and Colin. The more Geoffrey watched the children, the more he became convinced of his hunches. Now he understood why Tony was so out of control. No matter how hard he tried, the man could not get rid of the thought that if Julia had grown up with him, she would have remained the same, because she inherited the temperament from her father and did not raise her through upbringing. Well, we have life with you, Colin thoughtfully held out in silence. Nobody wanted to speak. Yes, and what can I say? No shock is different. It turned out that one unscrupulous midwife worked in the maternity ward 24 years ago. She did not like her job and mastered the profession only at the insistence of her parents. In the heart of a woman, a long-standing resentment against some rich family settled like a thorn in her. Yes, and she envied everyone who lived richer and more successful than her. Seeing a tender couple, Geoffrey and his first wife, a midwife, suddenly wanted to ruin their lives take out on them a long-standing resentment because of the one whom she could not reach now. She switched babies, replacing little Julia with Tony, hoping no one ever finds out what she's done. Jeffrey and his wife did not think about cheating because they did not do an ultrasound, but Colin and Margaret did not believe in such a miracle of technology. And they were not offended when the forecast did not come true. Each brought up his child, giving all his love and strength having no reason to doubt. Despite the revealed secret of the family, they still loved those children who were raised. Only now, everyone gathered on holidays. The first meetings were awkward. 
but this feeling soon passed. Tony and Julia, who were considered brother and sister, saw each other much more often, discussing topics of interest to them. They were still wary of their parents. After all, it was very difficult to accept that absolutely strangers turned out to be the most dear. Veronica often dilutes the company with her lightness and love of communication. It seemed that the girl could make anyone relax, especially when talking about the first impression of her fiancé. Tony proposed to his beloved last month, and the couple decided not to delay the wedding. Gladys and Jeffrey offered them to live together in a private house. Only the bride and groom wanted to build their own life. We will find an apartment more spacious and settle down. We are adults, Dad. We will become a separate family, Tony insisted, a little embarrassed, to declare such a thing in the presence of so many people. Wow! When did you grow up so much? Jeffrey laughed. You know when it's fun? Nico cheated, looking at the audience. When we explained to my parents why my fiancé has four of them, Will and Audrey, who saw their daughter, were only amazed when they received a wedding invitation a couple of times a year, the couple personally traveled to the village to announce the happy event. You are our relatives. Audrey hugged the children, not believing her happiness. How happy I am for you children. Will, with a critical look, looked at the future son-in-law in fashionable things, but approved. Nevertheless, he always dreamed of marrying Nick as soon as possible so that she would not live like the restless, and with a rich husband she will not be lost. After a magnificent wedding, the whole family gathered for a housewarming party in the newlyweds new apartment, which they purchased in the city center. The life of a young family has changed. They are overwhelmed by everyday problems, plans, and a honeymoon. Despite caring for his wife, Tony did not forget Colin either, and with Margaret he tried to help his family because they lived modestly. The spouses brushed aside, but could not hold back tears every time their son showed attention. Julia, however, getting closer to Jeffrey was more difficult. Although she madly respected him, she turned out to be more devoted to those people who raised her. She did not encroach on the wealth of her blood father, but lived her own life. 